Um, before we get started, let's ask if anyone has any additions to the agenda they'd like to make. If you do, let me know and I'll add them. Harlan? Uh, fourth class road policy. Fourth class road policy. Yeah. else? Something they want to talk about? No. All right. Then um, we'll start with the minutes from the um, annual town meeting um, on March 4th. Uh, the minutes is typed up. I think they're pretty inclusive. I move to approve them. Second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. And then we have the, <clears throat> the minutes from the last select board meeting, which I also read and approve of. I move to uh, Please. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Those. <coughs> Somebody else coming in? Okay. Oh, it's not quite spring, really. And so we've got. So Harlan, what is your question about a class four? Well, what, what is the town? What is the road policy? Right now, the, its default is the state, um, the state policy. You know that we're required to control water and um, erosion, but that's about it. You know, on the class four, we uh -huh. can do more, but we're not required to do more. But there are requirements for the state. Um, it's basically to control um, water. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Does anybody give a any thought to that in relation to the situation in Bingo? What's the situation? Bingo? You mean Bingo or Pine Gap Road? Oh. Pine Gap Road. Yeah. Well, it's obviously that erosion has not been controlled on there. So, but yeah, we've given thought to that. That that is um. There's other arguments about that road that are taking precedence now but once that's settled then we'll be you know addressing what needs to happen the upper half of pine gap road is going to be used by the forest service um, when they do their big you know the robinson project timber harvesting and they will leave the road as we desire at the end of that, so that's um, that's getting pretty um, pretty bad up there, and we're um, you're talking about the upper part. You mean up above uh, 62? Yes, yes, yeah. Excuse me, did you say Robinson Project for harvesting? Yes. My computer's not working, so I'm doing by hand. Oh, by hand. Do you want me to <laughs> slow down? That's all right. <laughs> I just want to make sure I got it correct. Thank you. <laughs> that road is also on the uh, municipal roads permit. So that road is already slated to have state funded ditching. What's that? Uh, Pine Gap Road is on on the list of hydrologically Logically connected right. roadways, and it will be placed into the program of improving the ditches um, by mandate of the state under the Clean Water Act. So that all of those improvements are, are will be coming about in the next few years. Road one is a 20 year project. So, when the state says it's time to do that road as a priority, we will be improving the ditches on that road. Huh. So, you pretty much made a decision that it's going to be a four class road? Is that right? No, as I said before, we're, we'll see how it all oh. falls <laughs> out and then we'll move forward after that. So, there's no really, you know, we're all waiting to see how that's going to be. You said that they were going to make well, it is on the map there. It is, the state has it listed as a class four road. So, it's a, you know, but obviously yeah. we're not doing anything now until the, the legal question is settled. Sure. That'll affect how, how and how much this work is being done and by who. Well, people still need, you're okay before they can work on it. Yeah, we said you. Yeah. All right. So that was uh, Harlan um, Joan. Speak. 
speaking of roads and road permits and, and all that stuff, what have you got for us? Uh, nothing specific to that, but other stuff. That's equally fine. Mm -hmm. um, first, uh, need a little, need, it's, I think it's kind of a decision time for uh, the issue of the bus shelter at the park and ride. Uh, I've been talking to the new community uh, relations person at, um, at uh, Stagecoach about whether having a shelter at the park and ride is the right place to have it. Um, he's very new, so he doesn't have a full picture of, you know, where people are picking up the bus uh, or what their needs, what the town's needs are. But it seems to be, from everyone I've talked to so far, including some of you, that the, uh, a shelter at the park and ride doesn't really <coughs> make much sense. Um, for one thing, we have $10,000 in that grant budget with a limited time left to be able to do something. And it appears that even a basic ADA uh, compliant shelter with all the installation that goes on, um, costs that go on um, that minimum cost is somewhere more like 20000 uh, for something that's going to be reasonably, you know, stable and last for a while. Um, this is based on some other shelters that Stagecoach has recently installed. Um, and not clear where else it should be in town at this point. Um, and it may be something that gets resolved a little down the road once we have a larger sidewalk improvement project underway and there's you know better sense of what's the right place for people whether it's school children or adults who take <coughs> the stagecoach um, where they want to stand where they want to hang out um, rather than trying putting it in a place where no one's actually going to use it yeah and it appears that i thought for a long time that the stagecoach was actually stopping at the park and ride but it appears that they're not right now because no one's standing there waiting for it they're all up at either max if they're adults, and I guess if they're school children, they're high schoolers, they tend to be more at the skid mark, which isn't necessarily a great place for them to hang out, but that's sort of a sep related but separate issue. So it's, I'm bringing it back to you for you to decide whether it's time to just pull the plug on the idea of, of a shelter at the park and ride, which is the only funding we have at the moment at some point down the road you know, we could find some more if we want to place it someplace else. <coughs> but right yeah, now, the $10,000 that we have is only for no, locating it at the park yeah. and ride. I think that would be kind of a white elephant putting a, a shelter at the park and ride at this time. It's not used that, that much. And I, and I think that makes sense to just let the situation age and then have a, a clearer need for it, then we could move forward on that. But I don't know what you guys think. I agree. I, I agree because you know I know everyone uses Max, but Max is private land, and that's not going to happen. I, I wouldn't think. No, so, not putting up a shelter. No, so it, I think it's just uh, I think we should uh, suspend that idea for tabling for a while. Nancy, you had something you wanted to say? I think there's a stagecoach sign at Max. There is. There, yeah. Yeah. There is. And if the uh, Sharon kids pick up the bus at Max. And the other kids are picked up at the skip mark. You know, I would think that, you know, Max is convenient, but it doesn't seem like the safest place with all these cars coming and going with kids. Seven o'clock in the morning. But I, you know. And they don't open till eight. So. Well, that's a good point. Well, I'm just thinking. Yeah. No, no, it's a good point. But there's definitely a little rush hour in yes. Rochester. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. This was brought before the school board and they discussed it and they brought it to the parents of the students. Mm -hmm. Since we have so few students, you just bring it to the yeah. parents. And, and, and they decided to leave it as it is. Um, they thought about moving the kids down to the school and that, that wasn't a feasible idea for them either. And then the parents said they liked the idea of them being close to a line that they needed to be yeah. Oh, yeah. well, this just benefits. It just, this yeah. Pros and cons. So I, I suspend as is for now. Uh, the next thing is, uh, I've heard about this before, but um, we have gotten a grant, it's actually a sub-grant from the state agency for 
from the Department of Public Safety for updating our pre-disaster mitigation plan. And Two Rivers is going to be doing the primary amount of work, but there is a, also a committee headed up by Vic Rivato to help them draft a plan, work together with the Two Rivers staff, put that together. Um, the grant amount is something like $7,600, $7,700, and there's a 25% match from the town required, which will be essentially filled by townspeople, you know, donating their time to put together the plan. So anyway, that's taken forever to come through the state. We finally received it this week. I'm not sure what happened, but it doesn't really matter. It's in your packet there for, for signature. And I uh, let Vic know that um, we have it now so they can start scheduling their work. And he's out of town, but he wanted me to let you know that he's putting together a planning meeting for the Emergency Preparedness Committee for April 10th. Um, so they'll get that underway. I imagine some or all of you might be asked to come to the front of some of those meetings. Um, uh, last but not least, uh, an update on the town garage funding for the, uh, the stormwater. Uh, White River Partnership did get a grant from the uh, Clean Water Block Grant for $100,000. Um, that's based on an estimate from our consultants of $72,000, but, you know, she made it 100 just to, you know, incorporate any add-ons that might come on or, or adjustments that maybe uh, might be made to the cost based on doing the final plan because we have a preliminary estimate and a preliminary plan from the consultants and part of that grant would be used to make it a final plan so we know exactly what we're doing. Um, the match re uh, required for that is uh, $14,400 based on if it's $72,000, but if it's actually a $100,000 project, uh, the required match is $20,000. Some of that can be uh, fulfilled by uh, the town crew doing some of the work, uh, but some of it would be cash, and so White River Partnership had applied to the National Forest Forest Foundation, that's not the exact, something like that, for to actually pay the match amount. Unfortunately, we just learned that that one was not approved. Um, so Mary has gotten back to us um, with a proposal, a couple different ways we could approach this. One is to simply use a portion of the Clean Water Block Grant that we already have in hand to do just the final, finish up the planning part, the design part but it would not cover implementation unless we found more money for that. Um, and then delay, wait, delay doing the implementation until, say, next year. Um, the risk in doing that is that we would have a plan that would be sitting on the shelf, and next year's funding for projects like this are very uncertain because where the state legislature seems to be going this in this term, with clean water funding is that's all going to Lake Champlain, all going to the Lake Champlain Basin. And Connecticut River Basin projects are going to be put on hold. So that's a change from what it's been for the past few years. And it's not certain it's going to go that way, but it seems to be the way it's headed right now. Until we find funding for it. Yeah. Yeah. So that would be a problem for um, because there are other grant sources like the ERP program, environmental, what's that stand for? I forget now. ERP is it's, it's environmental, I can't remember anymore. Anyway, it comes through DEC, Department of Environmental Conservation, and it's been around for a long time. You know, we've gotten, WRP has gotten a number of grants to do ERP projects, and it's been a good source of funding, but not clear that it will be going forward. So that would kind of leave us high, high and dry in terms of being able to implement a project at the garage. So she's asked whether instead we might be able to sort of do a swap with WRP's assistance with funding for town projects. And if we do get a state grant, ETRANS grant, structures grant, to uh, do the Cushman Road culvert installation, WRP was saying as of last week that they would 
um, look for funding to help us meet that match, which is, which is a 10% match. And the amount is very close, the 10% match would be very close to what the 10%, the 20% match would be for the town garage. 17.5 is what um, that is estimated to be. She feels like um, she can probably come up with that entire amount from a different source and then uh, have the town, instead of coming up with 17,005 for the culvert installation, to come up with somewhere between 14,004 and 20,000 as the match for the town garage. So effectively, the town would be spending the same amount of money but on the garage project instead of applying it to the person who the culvert. And there are obviously some details that need to be resolved, yeah. but I said at least this is something I just found out this afternoon, so it's kind of a de developing situation, but I just wanted to run that by you and see whether you felt you might be willing to um, take a little risk on that um, in order to implement the, the garage project rather than having just a design that sits on the shelf for, you know, so. Because money for the culvert project would still be likely there in a year, whereas money for the wastewater or the it's runoff storm water, stormwater is likely to run off. Yeah. <laughs> run off, yeah. <laughs> run off into yeah. another basin. We should also look at the plans again to see how much, uh, along with Cooter, to see how much we could do in house. Yeah, and that's something once we have a final design, we'll have a much better idea of what, um, yeah. yeah, what we can do in house. Right. So let's let's go for the design, see mm -hmm. where we stand. Mm -hmm. And what about the implementation part of it? Well, let's see what Mary comes up with. Right over partnership. Yeah. Um, but is that something you're open to? If she can come up with the money, and then the next thing I would need to ask her is. Uh, how fa how soon she would know whether she can actually come up with a 17.5 right. or the Right. Bring it on. <laughs> Sounds like we're still in the uh, exploratory phase and see what's yeah. actually feasible that could happen. Okay. But that's the only thing I, I would ask you to say is you're open to the idea without, you know, making yes. a commitment. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Martha, did you have a question on that? I just wanted to make sure, um, but I think I'm correct on this, that Mary Russ is, is going to help you get funding for, uh, could help you get funding for the matching requirement for the, for the town uh, stormwater runoff at the town garage project. She has funding to help the, yeah, to do 80% of the cost. Okay. But and it's so a 20% match, which she was also hoping to get from a different grant but that's what did not come through. Okay, but she still, she thinks she can get, help you get a matching fund. For, which would be for, for, for the stormwater runoff. For, no, it would be for a different project. Okay. But so it's all, it's all very I'm speculative. I'm confused because so I thought this was about the, storm, the town garage. The it's town about garage. two projects. It's yeah. about a culvert replacement on Mount Cushman Road. Okay. And a town garage project. Okay, but at the town garage, the project has to do with stormwater runoff. Yes, right? that's yeah. correct. Yes. Okay, that's what I yeah. meant. Sorry. Yeah. So if you could sort of keep that part of it sort of vague because I don't want sort of people to read into that that there is a commitment there from what the partnership. I'm going to say she she would try to help or explore yeah or would explore getting help that, research. Yeah. I don't want to tell you how to write your article. But That's all right. I, I don't want two people to think it's a done deal. But right. on the other hand, right. I need okay. to say that this is what we talked about. Right. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see actually what the actual plans are, and it's easier to know what we're talking about. Well, thank you. So we have um, we have a good representation from all sorts of departments here tonight, <laughs> and the next one on the list is the library. You're welcome to show up. Um, first off, do you have anything that you want to share specifically? Well, we've got good news. Yeah. We've had a very successful
successful fundraiser this year um, specifically for programs and the trustees have decided to spend a portion of that money this year to hire a part-time children's librarian um, that hopefully we will get started before summer reading season starts. Um, we'll be expending these monies over the next year or two, um, but we'll uh, be putting um, the rest of that money towards general programming at the library. So that's all coming from donations. So I saw um, I, when I saw some notes from the library board. I have a question: Does Orca Media show up at the library meetings at all? Is that no? Nope, but they're always welcome. Yeah, I know. Is that would be um, interesting to see because it can't always get to every meeting that's out there. Mm -hmm. But that uh, was just um, something that caught my eye. Was the decision to fund the health the um, the, um, the, um, it was like 40 something hundred dollars going into a fund for the health care matching fund or what is it? You, you want to take that? You want me to? You go ahead. You know not realize. The um, trustees have decided to um, withdraw from the town group Blue Cross Blue Shield policy as of July the 1st. And um, I will be going on Medicare at that point. And that, that it will be approximately half of the money that we have been spending towards Blue Cross will go into a, um, HRA for Medicare supplement. So we'll be you know, saving about 50% um, on those expenses. Unfortunately, that money um, has already been the savings. Uh, we have been advised by our investment advisor that we are with we are planning to withdraw too much money from our endowment fund, the, an unsustainable amount, so that savings will go towards um, that hole that would develop in our budget if we reduce that draw. <laughs> yes, we, we needed a way to plug that hole. Um, we have been, between what we had budgeted for 2020 to pull um, and what the advisor told us we needed to reduce to was it's about almost $6,000. So that kind of echoes how the town trustees found they couldn't contribute to the, the budget on the town side of things too. Is that probably the same factors coming into play here? From your your the guy managing your funds, is that what you're saying? Return on investments. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, we had been yeah. um, withdrawing too much in the last yeah. couple of years yes. and had planned the same amount for next year. Mm -hmm. And he said a total of 10,000, um, we shouldn't exceed that. <coughs> we had been budgeted for about 16,000. Okay. Thank you. Anything else you want? Good. Thank you. That's about it. Do we have anything else? Oh. Mark, it's nice to see you here tonight. You got any um, updates, any interesting stories to tell? Oh, nothing special. One thing I didn't want to mention before I forget, I was just double checking the calendar. Next month, um, I'm not sure how much advertising can be done, but April 27th uh, is Take Back Drug Day again uh, that we do participate in. So, you know, prescription drugs and whatnot that people need to get rid of. I'll be here at the office from uh, 10 to 2. On the 27th, collecting that stuff to turn over to the feds. Thank you so much. So that's that. Um, we've got, I got some training stuff going on the next several months here, actually. So I actually went to a, uh, a opioid a drug uh, seminar out in Burlington here last week. And Later uh, this week, I'm going to a school shooter training and different things. So, 
course is around a lot of training in the next few months. Mm -hmm. Then it's things spread around the course, but Okay, Tentatool on April 27th. Drop off your drugs. Yeah. Is uh, that here? It'll be yeah, in the, the back office, yeah. Okay, I'll have signs that night. Happens, I'm pretty sure it's, it's actually a, a trash day, so. Oh, good. Here, so yeah. it actually works out well. Yeah, get the mentality going. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, nothing else that I've heard. I haven't heard back. You guys haven't had to get back to leave for anything, so. I guess we're all set. Um, just a couple of concerns. I'm not sure where we're at with the office downstairs. If we want to do anything with the uh, issues I'm having down there, whether we want to get a, well, a dryer or whatever you want to call it. A dehumidifier? Something. Yeah. Uh, maybe when the summer comes, it'll be better anyway, but yeah, yeah, they're, they're uh, I'm still at the, the concerns down there. Yeah. So. I don't want to get disease not or a something. Big so. <laughs> Plowing tonight? I hope we're done plowing yeah. this year. Yeah. Hope so. Such a page. And we're getting ready for mud. Yeah. <laughs> and there will be some. Oh, it's here. Just be patient. I really, we've had some truck issues again, different truck. We get that bad. Life goes on. Just another day. <clears throat> Welcome. I saw you running around doing the meter readings today, or what was that? Yeah. Yeah. A couple of them I have to make because you can't see them. What, buried in the snow? Yeah. Stand the scene rules are great, except for when you gotta look for something. <laughs> okay. But yeah. I had a couple of questions for you, Terry, just to update myself. The the, uh, how the pH levels been going on the wells? Anywhere from 7.4 to 8. Okay. Is that before dosing or after? What's that? It's, it's after dosing, right? After dosing. Dosing. Putting the soda ash in. Right. Okay. How much, how, what's the difference you see, you're seeing between the two wells? About, uh, if it's running off well two, I think. It's about seven four. Okay. And for the same dose off well one, a lot of times it's running right between seven eight and eight. Okay, so you're you're dosing, dosing the same soda ash uh, <coughs> equation for both of them. There's no way I can change you can separate it. Separate that. Okay, so that's the range you're seeing. Yeah. Okay. I'm just not Sometimes that. it's. I mean, Dana's had the same problem. He did it for me a couple times. It just. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean. I've seen it as high as 8 too, but not very often. So then I tried, we knocked it down a little bit, and then it dropped way down. Okay. I mean, only five clicks. I mean, we aren't talking. Right. right. But you haven't seen going to the acidic side? No, okay. I haven't been six. Been seven once just because it got air. Okay. But that's just a one time deal. All right. I usually check it if I mix in the morning, I'll check it again in the afternoon just to make sure it doesn't have air in it. but. Okay. Yeah, they get it there once in a while. Most problem with the air is when you add uh, chlorine to it. You know, just that. I mean, you aren't talking a cup. Okay. But other than that, I usually put just chlorine in every three bags. All right. Thank you. Yep. But this also te we also tested this for both wells test about the same. So there's got to be something in the water that's a little bit different. You haven't, you haven't seen any seasonal variation, have you? No. Okay, that's good. All right. And, um, thank you. So we've been um, working on the new town policy for the, um, the polling place, parking lot, and campaign sign rules. And 
you had some input, you just found something else about that? that you were? Well, on the, on the Secretary of State site, there, there was, there's a comment um, for the day of the election, the presiding officer, which is the town clerk, can adopt a policy to allow signs to be placed in certain areas as long as the policy is applied evenly to all candidates. Um, basically what it says is that the presiding officer, which is the town clerk, can um, amend the rules, change the rules on the day of the election as they see fit. So I was taking this, this policy and I was going to suggest that that be added to it so that it's clear. So that's clear. Why don't I um, read what we have here so we could know um, how that would fit in. So the, the proposed um, is the presiding officer in Rochester, it is the town clerk, has jurisdiction over whether vehicles can be parked in the town office parking lot and where political signs can be placed on election day, which is 17 VSA 2508. That's just a state mandate. The established practice in Rochester is to not allow any public parking in the town office parking lot on election day so as to allow parking spaces for voters. Individuals and businesses who regularly use the parking lot must find parking in other areas of town. The one exception to this parking policy is for those persons employed in the town office and poll workers who will be required to park at the entrance to the parking lot, not close to the building, but at the back side. The presiding officer will not allow signs to be placed in the ground or affixed to anything on the property of the polling place. Individuals are allowed to stand and hold a sign at the entrance to the town office parking lot abutting School Street so long as a voter is not hindered or impeded from going into or out of the polling place. Exit polls or surveys can be done outside of the polling place as long as a voter voluntarily offers to participate and the person conducting the polls or survey does not hinder or impede the progress of the voter as he or she enters or leaves the polling place. And that's 17 VSA 2508 again. So that's the, uh, the proposed. And so how this doesn't, um, I don't know if that really changes much of what, what we said. Right, we're real, that, that is real specific. Yeah. So um, if that, if that works, and that is something, it, you know, you still have the authority on that day to say, wait a minute, this doesn't work. Um, but it should be made clear that the, the town clerk, who is the official presiding officer, is the one with the authority yeah. to make or change the rules on that particular day. I mean, if we, if we happen to have had a snowstorm and there was, you know, snow banks, you may need to change the rules about where they would stand. We wouldn't want anyone to get run over <laughs> standing at the edge of the parking lot. Yeah, question. Yeah, I have a question. I didn't get that gentleman's name that was at the town meeting. What did he violate? I'm, you know, because he went on and read this whole statement. Was he in violation of the rules that you just read? Was he too close to the polling place? Was no, he? that was a, that was um, that was a strange situation. Basically, I. Um, the previous town clerk took it upon herself to, there was a, generally there was a no overnight parking. And, and, and she showed up in the morning and um, saw a vehicle parked there unattended with a, a, a political sign on it. And, um, and her perception was that that had been parked, I think it had been parked there all night. And it was, um, and so she, she took action that she thought was appropriate, which was didn't confer with us on that, and we probably would have, you know, said, you know, no need to get too worked up about it. But it brought to the light the um, the fact that there were unwritten policies for years, and now if there's something that's written down, it's it'll do away with some of the confusion. Will you do away 
like post something out there like a week before an election so that people can read it and know what the uh, rules and the, regulations um, are. This will become part of our website. Yeah, yeah, yeah website. You know, on the website, and I suppose it could be posted in the in the bulletin board right outside there. Yes. I'm also going to ask Julie to send me a copy of that because I couldn't write as fast as you talk. Okay, I'll email her and ask her to send it to me so I can include it in my article. Thank you. Yeah, any other input? Thank you. Feel comfortable with it? I'm good with it. Yeah, that. I think it's so. Now to adopt a, a policy, I think I don't think we just approve that right now. Do we have to? Um, I think we have to have a um, answer to clarify that. I think you can adopt a policy. And adopt it now, and then just as long as it's in a public public setting. So, so I move to adopt this. A second, all in favor? Aye. Aye. 25th, right? Yep. So hopefully that'll do away with um, some of the distractions and frustrations. In gray areas. In gray areas. The motion. We have a. Um, Liquor license application from the um, folks running the Huntington House in. There's, um, there's a renewal and also for the um, outdoor for their little deck outside. So I move to approve these two. Second, it's all clear. services that is offering to have the um, two two days of the hazardous waste pickup and they talked about this last meeting mm -hmm. and it turns out um, one of these dates um, coincides with the usual recycling day and that probably would be um, too much to host both of those at the same time so I'm going to get back to them and ask to shift that one date to the, the next or before or after we can Call for that. Yeah. Yeah. So, excuse me, you'll announce those dates maybe the next meeting? Yeah. Okay, yeah. thank you. They're um, not until June and August, oh, so okay. we have some time. Sure, yeah. thank you. Um, old business there um, about the has there any been any progress on locating the missing record book? Okay. Well, I can report that there are a lot of interesting books. Yeah, in that vault. Uh, if anybody wants to see a copy of Earl McIntyre's discharge papers, <laughs> we have them. <laughs> Uh, so far, I've, I've got the north wall all completed, and I've got the east wall all done. And I'm preparing an index for the town clerk to have, so they'll know, you know, just what books are, what's where. Um, but it was pretty interesting. We found, for those of you who remember, a stenographer's mm -hmm. notebook, a big that was tucked in between other normal sized ledger books and it had been apparently misplaced for a great number of years until Mary Davis located it among, you know, all these others. So <coughs> I believe it was the Selectman's minutes, March of 50 to July of 52. 
So it just tells me that I'm not looking just for a ledger book. There, it may be in some other form. So, but I've still got the south wall and the west wall to do. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Was was that in shorthand? No, actually, thank goodness. Pencil. Because I don't know if there's anybody around that can read I, I it anymore. I can give it a try. It's been a while. <laughs> so I trust that the town is, uh, there won't be any decisions made until this book is found. I don't know if we can um, say that. I don't think that really. Well, plays what would what would the town's legal liability be under the Freedom of Information Act if it can't provide records that it's responsible for? Doesn't right FOIA apply to federal law? What's that? Doesn't FOIA apply to federal law, not necessarily state? Yeah. No, but it's really state um, law. So. There's there's been a lot of evidence and information and I don't think that there's I mean the the process that's in play now is it seems to have plenty to, to work on and I think that just holding up this well, yeah, missing might, book is kind of a, a but red herring. The opposing yeah. process might have plenty to work on if they had the, the minutes to look at. Well, that I, might be but if they're missing we can't find well, it, like a lot of other towns. Well, the question is, is what is the select board's, you know, the town's liability? I don't think, I don't think there's any liability. For not being able to provide records that are needed in a civil you lawsuit. Know, there we, is, don't, we don't know if they're needed. I, I think that's totally up to our attorneys yeah. on both sides. Really? Well, I think it'd be you something the town would want to look into, wouldn't they? Well, well we know, are. that's why we hire attorneys. There are a lot of towns missing a lot of records. Yeah. There's been fires. I know the town of Goshen has had yeah. several fires that have put big gaps in their town records. Well, and, yeah, and that's and a fire. Uh, has anybody reported them missing or anything? I mean, have you, you have, reported them? Yeah, well, we're talking about it like several meetings now, so it's public knowledge. Yeah. It's not, uh, yeah. Did you get that, Mary? <laughs> okay. Um, Bruce, do you have something? Well, I was just. I'd say that Goshen losing their records is relevant because a large portion of the town of Rochester, uh, the early records yeah. were Goshen records. And going back further, part of it was Philadelphia records. You try to find those now. I mean, if, I if I recall, signing off on the uh, invoices, the legal invoices we have, a lot of times it's been looking for those records. Is not trivial. That's all. But and, and really, one major factor in this is that if a significant dis decision had been made, when was in those records, it would have been communicated to the state and shown up on the state mm -hmm. roadmaps, which and then those do not reflect that kind of a of a movement. From the town, so it's really, you know, mm -hmm. looking at talking about evidence and putting the puzzle together. There's, Bruce, there's. Did you say that those only go back to what, 47? Well, the the records, the records go back earlier than that. Yeah, the town had to do the roadmaps in, in, in Montpelier. Yeah. They searched all the property yeah. records and they searched everything. Anyway, hopefully we're um, getting closer to. Resolution. It would be a little familiar. If it didn't agreement in that, in that dispute. So this will hopefully be behind us. So. Um, question: The book that you're looking for. Am I correct that it's select board minutes and town records, or just one or the other? Select board. Yeah, um, as far as we know, it just is select minutes. Okay. Minutes. Okay. That's what I thought, but I just want to make sure. Thank you. At least that's what I'm looking for. Thank you. And it covers what from 37 to well, I'll, I don't know. I'll have to go through this index to see what we've got in that figure. So, um, if anyone has anything else that they want to bring up, or is that going to do it? 
Yes. Um, I guess I'm in a squeaky wheel again. Um, has any effort been made for fund funds procurement for the uh, West Hill Bridge at this time? Not at this time. It's been recently inspected and and approved by the state as safe for what it's rated for, but it's not done. When was that done? Uh, it's done every five years. Five years. What? Yeah. Well, when was the last time? Uh, I looked at that record recently. Well, I think about two years ago. Um, a follow-up question on that. I was over at the uh, Wingbrook Bridge looking at what a great job that was. Um, it's a shorter span than West Hills, about 30 feet. And uh, I've talked to the contractors who have gone over our bridge and said the bridge is in pretty good shape, physically. But the underpinning is starting to fail. And that concerned me from two different contractors in town. But on the Winbrook, Wingbrook Bridge, how was that funded? The Not by the town. Not by the town. Was that all National Forest Service or no, 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 clean no. Water state block grant funds? The clean Water Block Grant, right? So technically, could we apply for funds like that for? No. Well, there's because highway that, funds that are available that, through that the state. That's putting a wing farm for a totally different reason. It's, it's not that it needed a bridge. I got culvert before. It was done as a, for the fish. Okay, so that's like your culvert on Maple, on Maple Hill. Hill? Both those culverts were replaced for to help fish move upstream. And for flood resiliency also. And so the, flood the, the culverts were undersized and for shape, right. so it's yeah. That the lower things. bridge used to wash out all the time. Do you have any idea that how long it would take for to investigate state funding, which is again it's some a lot of it's federal money that goes into the state coffers for bridges like that. I mean if you don't investigate it, you'll never know how much it would cost the town. In the future, I mean, well, it's, it's can't on we our, just it's, kind of investigate it's, that. It's definitely on the radar that it is something that's going to have to be addressed when it comes up. But in terms of, um, well, what do you mean by comes up? Like it gets washed out, it's going to get fixed. <laughs> well, that's what <laughs> I thought. <laughs> you were saying. Yeah, yeah. And we put a temporary so it bridge up in, down, and a little ways it. down the road. But no. But aside from that, there is. It is on our radar that that. You know we're going to have to address that sooner or later but you know meanwhile there's you know Currently it's, it's, it's an approved it's, bridge it's um it's it's well, not it's like approved we're, but it is limiting for the people that live on that road on uh, weight limits yeah yeah so it's been that way for a long time yeah but it'll um It'll eventually it'll need to be upgraded. There's no question about it. And, so, and it doesn't hurt to come and be the squeaky wheel. And we, and we do, yeah. we do. You know, we have overweight permits that are that we approve if a you know a heavier vehicle needs to go across it. But, um, I I just don't want to shoot myself in the foot. But every time I get a propane delivery, he's up. They're overweight. Yep. Yeah. So I guess we're just casting a blind eye to that type of delivery. Because <laughs> I need heat. <laughs> I guess no comment means a good thing. <laughs> just hang in there. Just hang in there. I don't know if I live long enough to see a new bridge, but I, who knows? We hope so. Yeah. <laughs> Not the way they're talking. <laughs> no, no. Harlan, you have to hope. <coughs> Anybody else have uh, anything to talk about? Otherwise, we'll um, pay some bills and get out of here. No? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.